Hey, and welcome back to Releve, where we introduce you to change makers in the dance industry and beyond. My name is Takia, and I'm so excited that you've decided to join us for yet another episode. This week's episode features a former Brown Girls Do Ballet ambassador, Cameron Stafford. Cameron has decided to turn the tables of dance beginning here in Dallas, Texas and beyond through a new project that she has launched called the Turning Table Project. So without further ado, Cameron Stafford. Hi everyone, my name is Cameron Stafford. I am 20 years old. I'm a current sophomore at Princeton University, a dancer of about 17 years and the founder and executive director of a nonprofit organization called Turning Tables Project. I started dance at three years old in Dallas and it was just recreational. Um, of course, doing the basic ballet, tap, and then my mom uh, transitioned me to Dallas Black Dance Theater where I did the summer enrichment. And from there, she really realized that the artistry began to really grow. And I think being around people who looked like me a little bit more helped with the comfort to express myself more and feel that I had more of a sense of belonging in dance. So I was a part of Dallas Black Dance Theater from age eight until age 18, I got to train with excellent, excellent company members, guest artists, got to learn a variety of repertory. I got to travel to Los Angeles and Dayton, Ohio and conferences here in Dallas. I also got to attend the um, Booker T. Washington High School for the Performing and Visual Arts for dance. And I always wanted to go to Booker T, but I came in later, I came in as a sophomore and I really wanted to figure out where I could belong. And I noticed that as an African-American dancer, I didn't represent the majority at this school. And I knew that everyone had their own niche, but I just felt like I, I was being a little bit sheltered, not as seen. I wasn't given the same access to resources as I felt other people who had come from different studios or who represented different socioeconomic statuses had received. And I think before, I had been used to dancing recreationally and I was just used to having fun and being in a very professional but still fun environment that is Booker T kind of forced me to realize how can I distinguish myself as an artist. And I think that was what made the switch for me from just wanting to dance and then transitioning to, I want to do this for my life. Like I want to be a dancer and I want to be professional and how can I distinguish myself when I feel as though I'm not being seen in the same way as other people. I've always been taught to not complain um, about issues, but instead to look towards a solution. And it prompted me to think about maybe other black female dancers are feeling the same way. Maybe we all feel as though the system isn't aligned for us or that we feel underrepresented. Um, so I started thinking and I was like, maybe we can present a show, a dance show that brings attention to various issues that me and other people see in the dance world, just so that we can start to prompt the conversation and allow for audience members to gain insight into what we think and how we feel. So that's what prompted the start of Turning Tables, my nonprofit organization. We thought about three or four different issues. Underrepresentation was one, and specifically underrepresentation in ballet. I also wanted to look at bias, such as stereotyping and also being typecasted into doing hip hop roles or modern, maybe not as much of the classical. I also looked at standard because I found that in my environment, I also saw that there were unequal standards and that a lot of the minorities and people of color had to work twice as hard to succeed in the same way. So with those ideas in mind, I wanted to also present something that shifted the narrative. So I wanted to focus also on pride and being okay with who you are and whether that is a person of color, whether that is someone who is faced with disabilities or anything that can prohibit you from succeeding in this performance and art. And so that's where the turning of the table really came into play. And so for the past three or so years, we've presented um, very successful shows had great turnouts for summer intensives, had the opportunity to um, teach children at the Boys and Girls Club. And this year we're looking to 
provide scholarships to allow dancers to continue to train without any socioeconomic or financial barrier because those things shouldn't impact whether or not you have a successful career and something that you do want to do. So I really wanted to give back and use my platform as an artist to bring up the issues that I found to be important for others who do not have the same access. I think that it was effective. It made a great mark on the school and a lot of people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, everyone was engaged and interested in being a part of a movement that was relevant to their interests. So it was great to be able to present this and make change in a pre-existing art form. This summer was very interesting. Um, we planned on having our third annual Turning Table show titled A Seat at the Table with a hundred plus dancers from the school and people flying in to choreograph and it was going to be our best show yet. But of course um, COVID-19 came in full stride and we had to cancel our show. But I think that canceling the show provided a good opportunity for me to think about how we can continue to fulfill our mission of turning tables, delivering dance and providing dance access without barriers and starting to rid of discrimination in dance. So we launched SIT, the Summer Intensive by Turning Tables, S-I-T-T. And with this, we gave dancers the opportunity to train in various dance genres and very important collaborative discussions about the issues that are addressed in the Turning Tables mission. Um, and this was in July, and we had the opportunity to have about 30 kids who were able to do pop-in classes and full registration. And thanks to Brown Girls Do Ballet, we were able to offer these kids scholarships as well. We were also able to provide scholarships through Be More Dance Company, run by the amazing Bridget Moore. Um, and this was a virtual Zoom intensive, which was new to everyone at the time. Previously in-person activities are now shifted to online platforms and it was a success. A lot of artists who I believe wouldn't have been able to come and fly into Dallas to teach were able to just log on to Zoom and share with the class. Similarly, students who are from all across the country were able to just tune in. And I think that Zoom and you know our situation that we are currently in provided a way to be more accessible which even though we are not particularly fond of COVID and the social distancing, it did provide a really good way to reach out to more than just the Dallas area and to allow dancers from everywhere to come in and learn more about our mission and to learn from various artists. So we hope to do more projects like these, sit and a seat at the table. When we get back to normal, we can present more shows. We also hope to continue to do our outreach programs and to teach kids who don't even know that dance is a viable option. And we also hope to continue to work towards our scholarship fund and to give scholarships to students to train wherever they want, but we need your help. So it would be great if you could visit turningtablesproject.com and consider giving a small donation. We just appreciate your willingness to contribute to diversifying the dance world as we see it. I am continuing to be the arts advocate through Turning Tables, and I'm also still performing. Although Princeton isn't a dance school, they have excellent dance resources, and I've enjoyed being able to take advantage of these and still work towards maintaining my dancing and working towards my professional goals while also getting the academics that I feel like will help me with the arts administration side and managing turning tables in the future.